And let's smork with everything, I guess. And I don't think I cast a spell. Oh, alright, that hurts a little bit. Not sure if that's exactly what we wanted, so we are going for the flyer right now. We are super all in, and we need to make sure that we get the full value. Hello everyone, it's Love here, and today we are playing something you did not expect. Pirates! We are going with Pirates. So this is the highest win rate version right now for the meta, and I played it for the first time, so there will be some misplays, but I will tell you what I did wrong and what you should be doing, so we will learn together this very interesting deck that is from new set. Alright, so what exactly deck does? It's a combination of aggro and artifacts, because a lot of uh, Pirates have artifact synergies, uh, mostly Captain Storm Cosmium Rider, because it puts 1-1 one, one counter on, a, on target pirate for every artifact that you get. And for example, Siren is a one mana one one that also creates an artifact plusing another pirate. Uh, you also have the Larsenist. Uh, I actually didn't know, but you can target only your opponent's artifact or creature, uh, which is a big deal, but you can also turn any map token into a treasure, accelerating you even more. Breach's Eager Pillager is probably the most, the biggest value card. It's similar to Adline. You play it, you attack with the rest of your pirates, and you instantly get some value. You either a treasure token or target shard that cannot block this turn or just exile the top card of your library and you can keep the value going and we'll talk about the impressions after the games this is the idea and yeah let's go into games because i know you are eager to sit in action especially against control oh and we have cavern of souls speaking of control uh, and today be sure to check out the outro at least the first part when we will talk about what mistakes i made and some interactions like mind link mech together with the tomb rider and battery so things i missed originally in the intro to give you the full picture if you like the deck so have fun guys and enjoy all right this will be one of the weird hands however we got only blue spells and only blue lands so you know what it's actually okay and the crewmate is one of the best hmm we really want the mark on all right what are you what was this man not smite not march there were no permanents was that a full stop? I have no idea, man. So we played it main phase because we don't have caverns and I want to make sure uh, that we resolve it against make disappear, for example, smite probably. Oh, get lost. All right, but we got stuff. We got quite a lot of stuff, so we will take it. Uh, let's go with the crewmate. And that's a siren. That's a decent draw. And we'll go with the Siren. And now we have all of those map tokens and we definitely like it. Are you serious? Alright then. I see. I see. Uh, we want this when the pirate attacks, right? That was interesting. And it cannot target enchantment, right? Let's go with this one because it creates some pressure. But, bro. Bro. Can you imagine better opening against what we have? That was literally the perfect card in the whole deck. But you know what? It's fine. Obviously, they, that's part of why they get lost, but still. Alright, let's play the land. Uh, we will use Cavern of Souls for this one, because we want to get this benefit and probably exile the top card of our library. That also means we get possibly to attack. Ward helps a little bit. Not the biggest deal, but you know. Let's get the card and get our... Well, man, this RNG is not perfect. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say. All right, we are going as slow as possible. It's one, is this turn, right? Of course it is. Of course it is. I'm not sure if I can hit one mana pirate, so I'm not activating the desk. Well, look at all this value under the lockdown. All right, so this is the Sunfall turn. He can get rid of the caverns. So he's he probably plays counter spells. If he plays so many demolition fields, uh, he's going into the counter spell plan, and that's for the caverns mostly. 
All right, bridges. So he's kind of guaranteed that when he removes this, we won't have another one. But that is a lot of mana. That's interesting. He decided he has a lot of time and he doesn't need to do it later. Sure. How do you work until end of your next turn? Okay, I like it. I understand the card. <laughs> Let's take the only card that isn't a land. Alright then. Only one mana, so we don't need to care about that. Uh, is there any way we can get something better? Let's try. Let's try. I should use double blue for this, because cavern is better land. So that was a bad auto tap. And the mining mech. Well, this is an annoying card. But we can just keep the chain going and then play the rider as well. So obviously he will sun for us. But it's one of his sun forts. And we keep the chain going over and over. Man, this is probably the best card for pirates. A creature that also draws you a creature. That's insane. That's actually, look at this. This is the board from this turn. Quite a lot of stats. Alright, so the mining was great, but you still need creatures to crew it. And if we didn't take this, it could happen, you know, in the bad way. Here's the sun for our opponent playing the m control match of his, of his dreams. And yeah, we probably start with only one blue mana, so we can go with counterable spells. He's down to three cards. There is a chance he stops having sun falls right now. And I think this is the play. So I think we go all in right now. I think this is the play. This one is uncounterable, even though he cannot counter creature spells. The spell pierce is, you know, the, the cheapest counter spell right now. And it only targets non creatures. And let's split the damage equally. Also on the flyer, so the token cannot block it. You know what? We are, we are doing something. If he has first sweeper, I think that will be it, but, you know, even he needs to stop at some point. We don't have second red mana. Uh, let's go with the with the mech, I think. It's not a creature, worth remembering, it's not a creature. We could also try to hit more pirates. But I want, I want the, the counter. And if they have make disappear, they still uh, need to sacrifice something, so it's not a great deal for them. Siren. And let's go for map. So we go around Smite. Unfortunately, this will probably be the Emperor. But you never know if that's a Smite or the Emperor. Oh, this is a good card. This is a good card. Alright. So we will just attack with Siren, he will Emperor it because he has perfect draw and that's that's a drawback. If that's a smite, that's good for us. Or just a Ganja. Alright, it's way better than the Emperor because it goes card for card and doesn't give any additional value. I'm super fine. If they I just want them to at zero cards and without memory deluge, that's how you win. After double sweeper. Alright, sure. We have still some possibilities. And this is a crew too. Alright. Let's see. If they want to be aggressive, be my guess. That would be perfect. So, I have a plan for the next turn already. Alright. Uncounterable. Because he's not using his demolishing field. Maybe he doesn't know why he included them. Not sure. Oh, right, I can just go like this. But to be fair, I don't need to, right? It's also legendary. I don't think you can crew. Uh, it doesn't copy the legendaries, right? Yep. So we go just like this. And now we have a pirate attacking. He can remove it right now, by the way. And let's attack for some sweet value. Now we have a flyer, right? Pirates are very evasive. Treasure token could be nice, but we should achieve better results with the top uh, cards from the library. See? Same thing. 
I hope I, I wish they you know activated the thing. I mean until the end of the next turn, so we can try to go for it. We give the information what we will play. Okay, good. Because I want this in the board so I can play the Galleon for the next turn. Alright. Let's see our play for the next turn. Alright, it's okay. It's something. The Mindlink mech doing some work and it goes around sweeper so that's very good. And we won! Our opponent had instant removal into lockdown that literally destroyed everything. Then played the sweeper <laughs> and we still won. So guys, uh, that's how you do it with aggro. <laughs> and it dies anyway, so that's good. That's good, he didn't paint himself. And what do we want? We definitely want to make sure that Markholm happens on the next turn and hopefully attacks, but I don't believe it. Or maybe. Are you a cutdown or a smite? No way he has it. Are you serious? Alright. Alright then. Man. That's really good. Uh, I don't. All oh right, I don't control anything. That helps with Celestus a little bit, but he will probably kill it instantly. If he's so good to draw double cut down, he's good enough to draw another removal. And we need to make sure that Celestus doesn't flip, right? However, we have we can go with the breaches, and that's really good. That's actually really good. Oh, but it's not a pirate. Keep, I keep forgetting it's not a pirate. It's in a pirate deck, but it's not a pirate. Alright, they want to flip. Good for them. Man, insane, insane opening. Triple removal on three first turns. So good. So, what do we do now? I think we go like this. It will get empered probably, but at least not samurai. And this way at least we can force him to kill it, so we can replay another one. And I'm not using map tokens because I expect it to die. Oh, uh, let's exile the card and see what we get. Oh, this is a perfect hit. Alright, this is the most powerful pirate right now. Breaches is great, but you need the, the other pirates to be good as well. He didn't remove anything. Does this mean a sweeper? Maybe. It feels like RNG is not on my side today. <laughs> like, it really does. Oh, uh, let's see. Okay, so now it will be cards, right? Oh, I cannot go for the rabbit. I think we don't use it yet. Because I think he will just remove my board. We didn't hit board wipe and he discarded for a while, which means he probably has more sweepers than one. Like you would never discard this in this kind of matchup. Yep. I don't care about the token, it will be a 3-3. See, and now Rabbit will be a huge creature. And that's perfect. It's so much better. Markorn. Can I do the thing? Not really. I need more mana. So I guess we play a dance step then. Now let's try to pump it. Maybe we draw lands, but you know, at least we get something extra. I don't think this is good for this matchup. And let's see if that would be a 3 3. No. A 2 2. I think this is the play, right? Now we equip it. Not sure if it loses the counter. But we got a better draw, so we kinda want to do this. Exile card. This turn, not really. So let's go for the treasure token. It gives us an artifact as well. And some extra damage, you know? Let's see. 
Only three cars to go, so I think we're closing somewhere. Get lost is okay, like we can just keep pump. Oh yes, the counter is here, all right, all right. And the lockdown masters hit again, but they kill their own stuff as well. The kite sail. Okay, okay. It's something. So we don't want to use cavern mana for this one. We just go with the kite sail. And I mean, we don't have too many targets. Let's make sure that Celestus uh, does what Celestus does. Provides mana, but uh, on different terms this, this time. Pretty good stuff. Let's see what the card is before we give them any funny targets. Because right now, it's just about those rolls. Yep. I'm happy I didn't play Markon. <laughs> Alright, so, so he exiles this. And now we play Markon. That is uncounterable. That was the plan, but it's getting hard, man. It actually is getting hard. Let's deal damage. Don't forget he has the fortress and this is free. Okay, this is good. No, 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 no. Let's keep using mana correctly. Now we need to go around Sunfall. This is tempting. This is a lot of value. Okay, let's go. Because we can chain it with the Captain Storm. And you know I like Captain Storm, because he's uh, or he, she's a Cosmium Rider. Uh, let's go for this, so everything has to toughness. And we'll use it later. Alright, two cards to rule them all. He needs to hit a Sweeper. And it is possible he can do it, but we will see. Let's roll the dice. Sorry. That's not the perfect hit because they cannot use the ability, right? And they have the fortress, don't forget, they have the token, so they will be able to use it later. Let's use the research desk so we can replay it and get some artifact synergies and get this card though. So Kenza. Double legendary, so it's only two mana for two extra creatures, that's not bad. This is also 2-2 two -two basically, it's on ground though. Yeah, I think this is better. One mana cheaper, kinda same power. Alright, we will cycle one of the cards of Markon. But first... But first, let's go for this. And now we know what he has, so we try to pump Markholm as much as possible. And see what we, what we get, basically. Mindlink Mech. I mean, our choice is pretty limited here. I think I'm just going Colin, man. And this will be the artifact. Uh, they can double block this, by the way. They probably don't want to. So they can block two creatures. This will be one and the second one, for example. So we deal five damage, so nowhere near lethal on this turn. So I think we just want to make sure that this doesn't die. <sighs> I could try to go for Sorin, man. Oh, I should put the counter here and go for Sorin. That was my mistake. Uh, but we don't want to cycle cards anyway, so now I will have to miss some damage. Oh wait, what's going on? It's Editor Sloth showing you how I should do it. I made a few misplays here. First you can crew with the Goblin, and as you can see it transforms into the Goblin, while also being an artifact, which means that it gives itself haste with flying and 5 power. And also the other thing I didn't show in the uh, video so far, breaches triggers multiple times something I originally didn't know. And you can choose all of the abilities. I felt that you guys need to know, so that's how it should look. Thanks Sparky for participating and let's get back into the game.
Yeah. So that was a huge mistake. Uh, if I had four counters here, I, I would just make sure that I get that value. Right now I deal no damage. Yeah, very bad play on my part. Uh, so, now he has the way. What is the play here? Maybe he just wants to, you know, activate everything. We play the spell, right? So the Celestus won't flip. He has one random card and one inner sun trigger. Also, he will live into 11, probably. Not sure. All right, let's see those two cards. All right, very bad top decks on our opponent. He, he isn't a great magic player. He should definitely do sun force. Don't forget, he discarded farewell in this matchup. And it's rare. Not the hit you really want. He already got the sun for, but we played nicely around it, and he discarded farewell. All right. All right. So let's go. All right. He live gains three. Man, it's getting intense. I think we are losing it. I don't think we can deal enough damage, right? 3, 2. I will go with this guy. This is more power, I guess. On ground, he won't be able to block everything. Let's do this one for science. And let's smork with everything, I guess. That's the play, right? Emperor. Definitely something that triggers out of attack, or at least it feels this way. And I don't think I cast a spell. Oh, all right, that hurts a little bit. Not sure if that's exactly what you wanted. So we are going for the flyer right now. We are super all in, and we need to make sure that we get the full value. Yep, here's the block. Fortunately, it has one attack, so it cannot really threaten anything. It can just mitigate part of the damage. All right. Would be nice. We could just get rid of this, so that would be probably a one game. <laughs> but how can you know? How can you know? Let's go make this Elipha. That's a good spell for this turn. I think we go like this. This is the most value we can get. So this one is already fine. We will go with those two. So they're all three power. This could make our draw better next turn, but it can also provide a creature. So I want to... Oh no, I messed it up as well. Oh, I need to activate it on... Yeah, it's on Earth, of course. All right, you can absolutely smirk me in the comments because I deserve this one. Yeah, not, not really playing with uh, Research Desk too much myself. So basically what happens, uh, it exiles at the end turn, so you need to activate it, because the activated effect of the Research Desk is until the end of the next turn, but not an earth itself. So yeah, I kind of didn't think long enough on this one. Uh, so, Celestus, up to seven. He's not getting the card he wants, because he wasted three or four sweepers already. Here's the Emperor. It might be good enough, right? Because it gets rid of the Malkor. And that's... Oh, they didn't go for it even. I'm home. Hi, it's Editor Sloth again. Oh boy, that was painful, wasn't it? So what happened is he didn't put a manual stop at the end step and uh, Emperor doesn't get the trigger then. You need to do it manually. Thanks for anyone pointing out in the comments because I didn't know it as well. And in one of my videos, I did exactly the same thing. But during this game, I forgot about it. So I was a bit confused, but he just didn't put a manual stop at the end step and he went for the next turn, which he didn't want to. Bro, man, that was mythic for you. Yeah, that's that's a victory. But you know what? Jokes aside, it's better when better player wins magic. It's so much better than just playing, you know, on curve three creatures and seeing who had the better opening hand. All right, we are going first. We have one drop, two drop, and more stuff. Let's see how it goes. No artifact yet. 
and we are against pretty high rank guy, so we will see. You know, he's playing mono red, so oh, all right, I'm interested. Now I am interested. So we don't have really artifacts. I could kill it, but that's not the play. Yeah, it's just a tutu, so instead we'll go with this guy. Because I think we can start comboing on the next turn. It's worse for attacking, but it's better for everything else. Yeah, let's go for the map token, I think. Because on the next turn we can do a pretty nice power play, right? We can go with uh, this into Siren if we hit Blue Land. If not, we can just go Siren into Volcanic Spite, potentially. And Magmatic Galon definitely needs to, you know, be useful. So I think we are in decent spot. Our opponent has a lot of cards, so we will see. Of course, no blocks. You don't want to trade for it. It's basically half of a one drop, so, you know, not your perfect opening. And he's smart. He knew that we won't block. Because this is sorcery speed. If we blocked, I mean, he would just play it from the graveyard, I guess. So not a huge difference after all. Hmm. Do we go for the mech? We kind of want to be aggressive. This is a 1-1. One, one. We won't be able to play both on this turn. Alright, I changed my mind for the 20th time. I want to play this so we get the artifact synergy first. This is a blocker, so I don't think we attack. This is not a great spot for us. We want to be attacking, but you know, we have those pirates. And their stats aren't super impressive. But you know, 2 mana to 2, always hot. Uh, of course, we can play double artifact if we hit the land, so that's good. But our opponent is absolutely popping off, and we probably need the Galleon for this. Oh boy, this will be hard. You can already tell. So, the pirates seem to have a lot of synergies, but they're pretty slow. Like, look at the synergies on our opponent. Two mana. I mean, three creatures for two mana is not the worst. And uh, we're a little, a little bit mana screwed, unfortunately. I will try to be aggressive, hoping, hoping for a block with uh, Knight Errant of Aeos. This way we can cycle at least. And we will see what we get. One Siren can go, especially that we don't have double blue. And now we try to get our synergies finally, because it's been very long, man. <laughs> Uh, let's target the Siren, because then it can block the tokens. And let's explore. We lose here, but we might get some value here. And we got an extra card, basically. So, you know, looking okay so far. Looking okay. Alright, so what is the play? Our opponent has two mana. So he can make one big play, and he wants to go wide, which suggests he has the recruiter, uh, and he wants the third land to just activate everything and attack for what six? Yeah, for a lot. Oh, knight errant of chaos is also a problem because it kind of acts as a mana base. Here's the recruiter, and it's getting really hot right now. Let's go for some artifacts, because that's how we get our advantage. We probably won't be able to block very well, unfortunately. So, I can get this to a 3-3, and that's probably what we do, right? We also have the Mind Link. So, I think we start to break, break uh, the stalemate a little bit with this flyer and we see from there like we are on equal life but he scales way harder but on only one huge turn so we scale like uh, you know gradually and he scales like explosively so at one turn he will try to absolutely dominate us but on the rest of the turns we should have a slight edge all right treasure token for this recruiter on the next turn probably he could also cycle the card, but he doesn't want to risk it. And let's go. So this will probably be the turn, right? No Galleon. A little bit unfortunate. Let's go here and see what we get. 
We can deal a lot of damage, but so can he. I don't think he wants to answer it. Man, my voice. Uh, so, we probably go for three trees. I cannot leave her on this turn, so let's not try. I think one red is better. Like, we can hit the Goblin Tomb Raider or something. Or I guess the Rabbit Battery. Yeah, we can play it on this turn, so it's a little bit better for this reason. Oh boy. This is Crew 1, right? So this would be a 4 3. We can the Magmatic Galleon. But it doesn't give us as much, right? And it will be hard to be so defensive here. And as we are watching it together, guys, if you are cringing right now, it's fine. I'm also cringing like crazy, man. I miss the whole line of play of Mindlink Mech. What I should have done is crew the Mindlink Mech with a Goblin uh, or even Rabbit Battery and just attack by air for 9 a turn and 2 turn lethal them. And that's it. I should win the game by now. So let's go back into the game and thank you for enduring it. But at least we know how it should be done right now. Also, the more we attack on this turn, the less we need to keep up for the next turns, right? We can equip all the batteries and the mind link and just go from there. Alright, so this will be his big turn. This is the turn when he will try to close the game. He is guaranteed to have the mana. And I don't think that would be enough. Normally I should just calculate everything and, you know, see if that kills me. But I think it doesn't. Also then he cannot keep any defenders except the recruiter. Raging Battle Mouse, alright. He doesn't have two turns, so he needs to do something right now. He gave up the, the recruiter plan. Right? Banneker. I think he lost. I don't think that will be enough. Unless he has some super smart card for one mana that kills something, like a siren. And that's not it. So he decided to scale for two turns, but he has no flying. Alright, that should be game then. <laughs> that was a weird play, like if you want to play your creatures and scoop, you could at least attack with Recruiter. I think it wouldn't be enough, but you know, at least it would be epic. Alright guys, after the games, I know it was painful. If you went until this point, you are a true hero of, of this video. I have to say, I didn't play this deck very optimally. And we'll talk about not only about impressions, but what I should have done and what did I miss about the deck. Because maybe some of you missed it as well. So, uh, I didn't really understand the Mind Link mech in this deck. What it really does, it synergizes with the Tomb Raider and the Battery. That's something... I I didn't really notice during all of those games. You can just play it for three and instantly crew it with haste creature and that means this can attack for five by by air. And that is huge because combined with Malcolm and Siren that gets all the pumps from the other creatures, suddenly you can create a lot of lethals out of nowhere. This is the line of playing I absolutely missed. And especially with the Tomb Raider, uh, like the plus one also makes a difference. Like five power is way more than four power. And this is the first part I fully missed. Uh, second, uh, bridges can trigger all of the abilities as we talk during the games. I didn't really realize it. It was like whenever, I, you know, a pirate attacks, but it's after every pirate. So of course it's capped at three effects, but if you get all of them, man, it's insane. I already like the card thinking that it's one of the effects because you can keep drawing cards or create more tempo with the treasures or just go more aggressive with blocks. But all of them together is insane. All right, and I think that kind of does it. There's also a small trick. I think you can uh, crew the mind link with the uh, rabbit battery, and then you can use reconfigure 
to attach it to Mindlink Mac and go with plus one, plus one with Air. Small things, but they do matter for agro decks. This is the difference between winning by one and losing by one. And I think uh, the deck is way stronger than it seems from the video because I'm not playing it very, very well. So if you, if you master the Pirates, they will be way better than you have seen. And I think that tells a lot of potential. What I didn't like, because this is the meta version, right? This is the highest win rate right now, but I don't like few things. Uh, I didn't really enjoy Magmatic Galleon. I never used this card. It was never feeling great. And I guess you can create a lot of tokens and scale all this stuff, but I just didn't get into this part. I honestly think the better card would be, I think that's how it's called, right? I think this should be instead of the Magmatic Galleon, possibly even more because the synergies, it's artifact, it crews, it explores, right? So you can pump everything. I honestly think this is way, way better. So I would probably change Magmatic Galleons all of them into Shunners, and I think that would improve the deck. I feel like it, but of course I'm not a master of pirates so far. So, you know, take it with a grain of salt, but I, it feels better. It feels much more synergistic with the rest of the deck. It's also cheaper. The fact that we couldn't even get to five mana while having Magmatic Galleon uh, tells a little bit of a little bit of a story so we will see we will see maybe we'll make our own version in future because i have some ideas but yeah this one definitely does the job and it will probably get you to mythic if you play it right so guys i hope you enjoyed all the extra commentary uh, final impressions and all the misplays that we tried to rectify with our commentary so tell me in the comments if you enjoyed it how you liked you know a bit of a different style of video today uh, it was kind of forced because i just made so many nice plays i couldn't watch it and i felt your pain all right so if you aren't subscribed be sure to subscribe like and share it really helps the channel and yeah thank you for being here thank you for enduring all the misplays and i hope you still had a great fun so see you tomorrow